All right, already the last speaker of this session. <clears throat> now, um, Bitcoin, usually when I speak about Bitcoin with friends, with family, they still think that Bitcoin is the, yeah, it's, it's money for criminals. And while the FBI is actually indicated that they love Bitcoin because for them, it's quite easy actually to trace criminal funds. What is the current status of this? What is the current status of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies being used by criminals? And how does the prosecution office have a look at this? Now, really excited to uh, have the next speaker with us, Reinier Bredenoord from the Openbaar Ministerie, which is in English the prosecution office. Reinier, welcome. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, great uh, you have me, so thank you. Yeah, am I saying this right? The prosecution office, right? Yes, it's 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 the, the, the Dutch Pro prosecution service, actually. And, and then we have various branches at them and we call them offices, but, but I think everyone understands. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> now I'm curious to learn uh, also from your side, uh, how did you get in touch with uh, Bitcoin, with blockchain? Well, that was actually before I worked at the, the prosecution service. Uh, I, I worked at a, uh, actually at a law firm where we in, investigated uh, uh, technical possibilities. And um, there I started my interest uh, for blockchain technology. And, and from blockchain technology, I came to the first practical application, actually. So that's, uh, uh, that was then Bitcoin in 2015, 2016. So um, actually the, the firm also joined the Dutch blockchain coalition while I worked there. Um, but afterwards, uh, the Dutch public prosecution service uh, was searching for someone uh, to set up an agenda and a strategy over there. So that's when I joined uh, the prosecution service. Interesting. And where does the prosecution service usually uh, comes in when it comes to crypto? Well, um, our most important job is uh, is 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 to uh, to track criminals and and to uh, uh, to take them down and and of course to take down their money um, to hurt them where it hurts the most. So that's in the wallet, <laughs> um, and the wallet is actually the same word, of course, for the for the Bitcoin uh, uh, storage places. Um, we actually we come in uh, uh, for, for for serious crimes, so um, um, I think that's that's the most important. So when things really go wrong in, from a criminal perspective, um, um, that's where we turn uh, turn in. And our core business is to lead investigations and to prosecute uh, suspects. Um, but next next to that, of course, we we have some other uh, uh, topics, and we also are very um, um, well. We we have to. Uh, improvise. We have to be innovative because our, well, our our, our target audience um, is very innovative as well. So um, that's where where virtual assets come in for the prosecution service. Interesting. So, uh, for example, the Dutch police force or a uh, Dutch crypto exchange, they see some uh, well, some some illicit uh, activity, and then they contact you, and you start to research actually if this is like criminal activity, right? Yes, well, actually, we do that together with the investigative service. So you, you mentioned the police. So we, we do that together with the police or the, the fiscal uh, investigation service. Um, we, 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 and we start at various points. So we, 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 we can see uh, criminal activity going on. Um, or, or we get, like you said, we get a report from an, uh, from an, in, uh, from an institute uh, like a virtual asset exchange or, or some other company or a bank where, where Turnus uh, works. And then we start investigating. Uh, we can, uh, and 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 well, that and that's the starting point mostly. But we have other sources as well, of course. Yeah. Now um, uh, you have, like, in my perspective, like a great overview of the criminal activity, uh, like broader sense, of course, in the Netherlands um, in the beginning of crypto, and I think still in some Dutch uh, press. Uh, crypto is getting a bad name, of course, for all the uh, criminal transactions, with ransomware, that kind of stuff. Um, how big is the problem right now? I mean, uh, there was a report, I think, by the FBI published that it's, or I think it was Chainalyze, uh, one of the bigger companies that we had actually last year in our event, um, that it's only a fraction, I think 0.5% uh, of the uh, blockchain transactions, crypto transactions, are uh, marked as illicit. Um, is this true? How big is it? Is this how big is it in the Netherlands? Do we have like an overview of this, or an indication? 
Well, well, it's difficult to, to give to give numbers because um, there are quite some variables uh, um, in, in, in making a, a percentage. Um, one of the things is you, you should be you should know all the transactions to, to know which transactions are are illicit. Um, for example, there are many criminal transactions where we don't know they're criminal just looking from the outside to it. So you really need investigative information uh, before you can decide if it's a criminal transaction. Um, I think, and we have reports, it's, it's 0.5%. There are, there are reports that it's, it's much bigger uh, uh, number. Uh, I think it's, it's somewhere in between. Um, let me state that that virtual assets or cryptos are being used by criminals, and 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 well, that that's what we see, and we see it in a wide variety of criminal activity. For example, you already mentioned the ransomware, um, but it's very on top of it. You know, you have to pay with with Bitcoin or another coin um, um, for the ransom. It, it, it's the same with with online drug trafficking or or other illicit online trafficking. You have to pay. Um, uh, with Bitcoin or or or, or Monero or, or or whatever coin, um, but we also see it in in other types of, of criminal behavior, um, mostly in 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 um, payment methods where you you need to get a distance, a physical distance, or for example, international trade and and uh, things like that. We see it in scams. We we see it as a just as a tool to launder money. So someone is, is, is scammed or money is stolen and then it's converted to Bitcoin in, in an effort uh, uh, to conceal uh, um, the origins and to conceal it from the investigative services. Interesting, so quite broad. Um, I guess you're working also with prosecution offices all around the world. Um, but what kind of ways are you working on this? I mean, I can see that you can, you have of course, uh, probably the numbers, the mobile numbers of some of the Dutch uh, exchanges, uh, but there's of course so many exchanges also in shady countries. There are so many other ways, uh, mixers. Um, what kind of ways are you as a prosecution office Working to, but well, working actually on this criminal activity. Yeah, well, it, 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 like you mentioned, it, it's it's all around the globe, and we have to chase money all around the globe. So that that's quite an investment on our side. Um, and and we have mobile numbers, we have email addresses, not just of the Dutch companies, also of companies all around the globe. But we also have our own network all around the globe. Uh, also with with. Other authorities, we can um, uh, we use a lot of mutual legal assistance. Um, so we ask other countries to help us in an investigation, or to to get information, or to seize assets. Um, and sometimes we can call companies ourselves, although they are uh, on the other side of the globe, and, and just ask them to freeze criminal assets. And um, we have the experience that that many companies in the in this space are, are quite collaborative on this and they also want to uh, uh, hurt criminals and they also want to to um, frustrate it and, and get it from their platforms well that's that's, that's really positive to hear um, I, I can see that you have quite an, well, a team of professionals crypto professionals working with you what are the, the technical difficulties can you say something about that like like mixers uh, for example yeah well I think the technical developments are, are in general one of the, the difficulties we face because well um, like you 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 started with it, it virtual assets can be traced I think almost all digital activity can be traced um, but then you get another technical innovation and it's it's more difficult to trace it um, like a mixer for example and then um, we have to investigate how we can demix a mixer or or see if a mixer really offers the service it's it claims to offer uh, that, that sometimes it, someone says I can mix everything and 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 there's no trace but that's yeah. not always true uh, sometimes we, we can see it and then yeah that, that comes to the uh, to the expertise of, of, of our technical specialists and 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 but also of our financial specialists and um, so it's 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 uh, it's a uh, like always it's a uh, it's a game or, or to say so between us and, and criminals and the advantage we have is if we always act um, after the fact. So what is anonymous today can be de-anonymized tomorrow, and then we know what happened and where to find a suspect or his money, and then well we can think something about that. So um, 
I think that that's that's very important for us. Yeah, it's interesting. We we heard this last year from uh, Chainalysis, one of the bigger analysis companies, and uh, they're using of course, their their tool is being used by a lot of well, I guess also prosecution offices all around the world actually to de-anonymize uh, data and transactions. So um, interesting that you mentioned this. Um, Coming back to all these aspects, um, we talked about mixers. Um, what are other red flags for you as a prosecution office? What are other red flags when you see them at crypto exchanges, crypto companies, um, transactions? Are there any things also maybe from a consumer perspective um, that people can actually well, have a look at if they see them that they really should refrain from doing any transactions, spending any money or... Can you say something about this, like the red flags? Yes, well, it's it's difficult to say too much because, of course, we don't want to, to, to tell the criminals how, how <laughs> we find them. Um, um, but the thing is, we, we draw red flags. Yes, we do that. And and we also share those red flags with, with, with for example, exchanges and other companies and, and um, um, to teach them how criminal behavior look, looks like. And in, in general, yeah, we can say that in, 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 in some cases, criminal behavior differs from normal behavior of virtual assets and and for example if we see uh, transactions being being um, uh, going through mixers uh, like two or three mixers in a row and then being swapped to other coins and then being swapped again um, with, without really uh, any 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 profit being made from it because it actually costs money and it's not that it's it's done from a from an investigative perspective or something like that then we, we, well, you can say, well, something is going on and, and <laughs> yeah. that, that's quite easy. Um, so so it's, it's all about what, what should a normal behavior look like and then compare it to that. Yeah, interesting. Now we have a question already from the audience um, concerning MLAs. So are mutual legal assistances fast enough for crypto investigations? Tina is asking. It's a very interesting question because in, in a regular procedure, it can take a lot of time before we have uh, worked all the paper. And, and then that goes two ways because we have to write everything down we need. And then it has to go to uh, uh, to another uh, authority. And then, it, well, it, it has to land on, on the right desk and then it, it, something has to be done. Um, so it's all about informal contact, I think, and, and, and making sure that we um, uh, can act um, um, in a swift way, and sometimes it's, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of paperwork. But then the challenge is, uh, can we do something before we have formalized the legal assistance? Yeah. Um, so, for example, if we just take pick up the phone and, and tell another authority that something is going on somewhere, um, uh, an exchange can be called, and then they can freeze assets on their own behalf, and then afterwards we we can formalize and and, and actually seize assets. Um, um, to bring it under our control. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Now we're um, almost at the end of this uh, this conversation, which I really enjoy. Um, but I'm really curious to learn from your sides. <clears throat> uh, one of the themes also from our event is decentralized everything, right? We see uh, decentralized exchanges, we see decentralized finance, we see uh, DAOs, we just spoke about them. Um, so what do you think of these decentralized aspect, aspects? Because, well, you can't regulate them, right? Or enforce them because they're deregulated, they're decentralized. Well, what is your view on this? Well, well, um, I, I, I'm not sure if you can really not regulate them. I, I think there's a lot of discussion going on and a lot of pioneering going on in that field. So. Um, and I'm not a regulator. That that's uh, a different kind of job. We we are crime fighting, um, and from the crime fighting perspective, there are quite some quite some possibilities there where we where we can act on. And and of course, it, it's it's an all new development, and we have to to uh, uh, to to act on it and to think on it and to develop our own ways how to tackle things. Um, and sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't. Um, and, and I can tell you in, in which cases it, it's difficult for us and in which cases it isn't. Um, but in general, uh, I think there are quite some possibilities to track uh, whatever goes on in, in, in DeFi space. And if you look at, at, at a lot of DeFi, and, and then I go a little back to the regulation part, is that um, 
you actually see that there is some kind of control in, in, in systems. And, and, and although it's DeFi, uh, you, you have to make up an account somewhere. Um, so we can act on that and, and accounts can be frozen and accounts can be kicked and, 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 and things like that. And well, in, and in general, if we look at uh, f- from, for example, a money laundering perspective and we look at Dutch legislation, um, everyone is responsible for, for whomever he takes money from or, or, or goods from. So um, there's also a kind of individ- individual responsibility um, in what's going on. And you also always have to investigate who your real uh, counterparts are and, and what is the, um, what, 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 well, who are you doing business with? And is, is this a, a legit person or, or is it illegit? It's, it's the same like with taking cash from someone you don't know and, and he offers you a huge sum um what's going on then that that's something you should ask yourself not wanting to kill DeFi and saying well it, everything's wrong and everyone should investigate everything because we know in many cases it cannot um so it's it's but we're not there yet i think and and there's a lot of discussion that will be uh that, that will go on yeah yeah we're not there yet but we just got started and there are some great steps being taken uh, right now also in the upcoming uh, year. Uh, we just spoke with Tönus and other speakers as well about the MIGA regulation, about all the technological advancements. So um, they're really looking forward also to that in the upcoming year. But it was very interesting to uh, speak with you uh, about um, yeah, just crypto from a different perspective, right? Usually everybody's speaking about you know crypto going to the moon and um, all like the positive ways. And I think it was very interesting to also have like a different view actually on criminal activity, on the regulator perspective. So um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us in a virtual way. Uh, it was really nice having this conversation with you. Um, thank you very much as well.